Now that Chandrayaan 3 landed on the moon, it's going to be there for the next 14 days. But what is it going to do on the lunar surface for the next 14 days? To start with, let's first understand why Chandrayaan 3 has landed on the south pole of the moon. See, what happens is most spacecrafts land near the equator. Actually, all spacecrafts until now have landed on or near the equator of the moon. It has better landing conditions. And the day is longer near the equator, which allows for more sunlight, helping the solar panels to draw more power, which is conducive for sustained and longer missions. But this means that the polar regions of the moon remain largely unexplored. See, the polar regions lie completely in darkness without any sunlight and the temperatures can go below 230 degrees Celsius, which creates an issue in the operation of instruments. Not to forget, there are also massive craters all over the lunar poles. But the extreme cold also means anything that exists in these regions will remain frozen in time. By landing near the pole, Chandrayaan-3 could examine the rocks and soils that would allow scientists to understand the very early days of the solar system. Which is why it is a big deal that India has become the first country to be able to pull this off. Make no mistake, this was absolutely a race. Unfortunately, Russia's Luna 25 spacecraft crashed on the moon just days before Chandrayaan-3 landed. Okay, so now that Chandrayaan-3 has successfully landed on South Pole of the Moon, what will it do for the next 14 days that it's there? According to ISRO, upon landing on the Moon, the Chandrayaan-3's rover will be conducting a plethora of experiments. A. Vibrations on the lunar surface due to seismic events and or due to the impact of meteoroids, rover moments, etc. B. Near-surface plasma environment. C. Temperature and thermal conductivity up to the depth of 10 cm. D. Elemental composition in and around the landing site. E. Spectral signatures Earth from lunar orbit. Now, these are a lot of scientific terms. Let me break it down for you the best I can. First, its rover Pragyan is already taking samples of the lunar surface through which we will be able to derive the chemical composition and infer mineralogical composition of the south pole of the moon. Studying vibrations caused by seismic events, impacts and rover moments helps scientists understand the moon's internal structure, its geological activity and the potential for moon quakes. This information is valuable for assessing the safety of future lunar habitats and infrastructure. Apart from this, it will also be researching the moon's water resources, an aspect that is being considered pivotal to potential lunar colonization. Second, the second series of experiments will help understanding the near-surface plasma environment. This will give researchers a better sense of interaction between the moon and the solar wind. This interaction can affect the moon's surface and the way it interacts with cosmic and solar radiation. Knowledge of the plasma environment is essential for planning and protecting future lunar missions. Third, Chandra's surface thermophysical experiment will also be carrying out the measurements of thermal properties of the lunar surface near the polar region. Measuring lunar surface temperatures and thermal conductivity aids in designing equipment and habitats that can withstand extreme temperature variations. This data is crucial for the development of thermal control systems to keep equipment functional and astronauts safe during lunar missions. Fourth. ISRO also plans to understand the elemental composition in and around the landing site. Now, analyzing the elemental composition of the lunar surface would provide insights into the moon's origin, geology and history. Understanding the distribution of elements helps scientists piece together the process that shaped the moon and provides clue about the broader solar system's evolution. Fifth. Meanwhile, the stunning of Earth's spectral signatures from the Moon's orbit would provide a unique perspective on our planet. This data can be used to monitor Earth's climate, weather patterns, land use changes and atmospheric composition. It's a way to gather valuable information about our own planet while exploring the Moon. So basically, to cut a long story short, the aim of this mission is not just to understand the early solar system, track Earth's climate, but also try and set up the Moon for future missions. All of this will have to be done in the span of one lunar day. Now, one lunar day is roughly 29 Earth days. But why is the Chandrayaan-3 only going to be functional for 14 days? 
see the moon is tidally locked it has straight up almost 14 days of sunlight and 14 days of night and remember when we said that it gets really cold in the lunar south pole in the absence of the sun well that's exactly why isro has to conduct all its business during the day our equipments are not meant to function in that kind of cold that is minus 238 degrees celsius which is why when we landed it was the beginning of the lunar day literally it was dawn on the moon giving isro the maximum time possible to conduct all the experiments it had planned that's the gist see you in the next one